Okay, today we are talking about vector addition, so how do you add and subtract vectors. I think the analogy I made yesterday that a vector is a set of instructions for how to get from one point to another, but it is not actually a point, right? It's like if I say, you know, take five steps to your left, that that doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean a physical location, right? It means a set of instructions for how to move from any location to some other location. And if you think about vectors in that way, then adding them together is pretty easy because you can see here adding, so it says if you walk north 800 meters and then west 600 meters, the result is the same as if you had walked north 37 west for 1000 meters, right? So basically here's where you started, you walked this way and then you walked this way but if you had just walked this way in the first place, you would have got to the same place. And this is what we call, this is how you add vectors together. So when you add two vectors together, or actually any number of vectors together, you get what's called a resultant, which is also a vector. And basically the resultant starts in the same place you started and ends after you had finished all of the instructions from all the other vectors. So you can see how they did this. They put the first vector here, then where this one stopped, they started the next one, and where this one stopped was the end of the was the end of the line for this. Cause there's only two things, right? So it's, you started down here, you ended up here, and that is called the resultant. That is sort of like the the a single vector that's equivalent to the sum, right? So you know how like when you're adding numbers together, you do things like three plus five equals eight. This would be like a similar kind of thing. It would be like this vector going this way plus this vector going that way is equal to this r vector, right? So let's just say, we could say something like a uh, plus b equals uh, r. Okay, uh, something like that. So it's a single vector, just like 8 is a single number that represents two numbers added together. R is a single vector that's equivalent to the two vectors that you added. Okay? So here's another one. In a tug of war, three people are pulling to the left with forces of 150 and 95. The total force is simple. You would draw three arrows all pointing to the left. Yeah, you would start start one to the end of it, then to the end of the next one, then to the end of the next one. You simply add them all up and get a, a vector of 245 to the left. Now, how do you actually add vectors and subtract them? So u plus v means you pick a point, so whatever, start down here, draw a vector u, where vector u ends, you draw a vector v so that you make, you know, they kind of join together in this manner, and then you simply connect the beginning to the end. So that's what you're seeing here. So vector u first, then vector v, and then vector u plus v sort of cuts across from this start point to that finish point, and that is how you add vectors together. Now, note, adding vectors has them tip to tail, whereas finding the angle between them is tail to tail, like yesterday. Remember yesterday when we were trying to find the angle between two vectors? What we did is we drew it. Let's just see if I have a good example. Sorry, I thought I would. Right? Like here, if you were to add V and U together, you'd have to draw U first, then draw V. It would be over here somewhere, and then you'd connect from beginning to end. So just Pay attention that when you're adding vectors together versus when you're finding the angle between them, the setup is slightly different, right? So it's just the first thing that uh, tends to give people trouble here. Uh, okay, so to add two vectors together, we simply draw one, then draw the other, and then we do a start to finish vector that connects. Notice that if I do u first and then v, or if I do v first and then u, the, the sum is still equivalent right? This is called the commutative law, 
It simply means that if whatever order you add vectors in, the result is still the same. And again, this is similar to what you would expect with like a regular number, right? Like 3 plus 5 equals 8, or 5 plus 3 equals 8, right? It doesn't matter which order you do it in, it still works. So that's just a note. Uh, this is an interesting idea here. The magnitude of u and v added together, right, can never be greater than the magnitude of the two vectors on their own. Okay? And this should make sense if you think of this as a triangle. You could never have this third side of the triangle be longer than both the other two sides put together, right? The third side of the triangle is always shorter than the sum of the other two sides. And that's simply what that note down there is demonstrating. Okay, now the other way that you can draw vector addition, so hey, this is the head to tail method. The other way you can draw them is you can draw them as though you were getting the angle between them. Okay, so you draw them originating from the same place as though you were looking for theta. And then what you do is you sketch a parallelogram where you draw another V going across the top and another U going across the side. And basically, from one corner of the parallelogram to the other would be how to add them. I actually really think the parallelogram is a good way of doing this. Um, again, both ways are good. I would know both. But if you really get the parallelogram method, I think it will cut down mistakes because you're not going to mix up the angle between them and adding them, which is the mistake that people tend to make. So the diagonal cutting across the parallelogram is the uh, the resultant. Okay, so that would be the, the sum u plus v. Once again, the sum of the, the two vectors cannot be greater than the sum of their, their magnitudes. Now, when you subtract vectors, okay, uh, what I would suggest, again, there are two options. One option is to add the negative. So, for example, this is u take away v. So I do a positive u. And then I add a negative V, which would cause me to go left, right? And my answer would be from this corner going up and left, which you can see here in this diagram. So they've started with U, they drew a positive U, and then they drew a negative V, and they did start to end. And that's a very good way of doing this. The other way that you can do uh, with the parallelogram is uh, if you, uh, this really isn't a very good diagram. If you look at our diagram for adding the vectors, from this corner to that corner is the sum, and cutting across the other diagonal of the parallelogram is the difference. Okay, so u minus v would start down in this bottom corner and go up into the top uh, left corner. v take away u, right, would go, you know, here's a positive v and then a negative u. So v take away u would be the same vector, just pointed the other way, right? So v take away u would start in the top left and end in the bottom right. So again, the parallelogram I think is really important. It might seem like overkill or that this system is simpler. I don't disagree with that, but in the long run, I think understanding the parallelogram will, will really, really help you. Uh, okay. Now, of course, if you're adding things that are parallel, th this is the easiest way it could possibly be, because if you're adding things that are parallel, the direction doesn't really play a role, right? U plus V is simply adding them together, add their magnitudes, since they're going in the same direction. If they're going in opposite directions, you know, subtract the magnitude from whichever one, uh, you know, you need to. Okay, so when they're parallel, it's the easiest, the easiest these questions can get because you're, you're literally just adding numbers or subtracting numbers here. There's nothing, you know, you don't need to do any parallelograms or anything like that because everything's just pointed in a straight line. Notice when the vectors are parallel, the sum of the magnitudes is equal to the sum, you know, like the magnitude of the sum is equal to the sum of the magnitudes. Okay? Now the zero vector is, you know, it's a zero. Uh, it, it would be the resultant if you were to add a vector and its opposite because you would basically start here and go down here and then walk right back where you started and you would end up at zero. So the zero vector is just a zero with a little vector sign. 
it has no magnitude and of course it, it has no specific direction because without a magnitude it can't really have a direction okay these are a bunch of properties of vectors um, I don't I think this one is really important you should be able to explain that one it's a good communication like type of question uh, you know this one is pretty obvious it just says that if you add a and b and then add c it would be the same as adding a to b plus c and it just just think of it like regular addition i mean regular addition would work the same way there uh, this is an idea with scalar multiplication if you scale up the vector by n and then scale it again by m it's the same thing as if you just scaled it by m and n you can use scalar multiplication in the distributive property so if you add a plus b and then scale it it would be the same as scaling a and adding it to a scaled b and again this is just the same oh sorry this is yeah sorry the two scalars can also be separated as well um, yeah so I think what I I don't know if I have a good way of doing this uh, Maybe let's do this on GeoGebra. I'm just going to draw this same picture on GeoGebra and let's just make a couple of notes about what it should look like. So let's make a, uh, let's, so just so I can see this, U is kind of off to the side and V is along the bottom. So let's draw a vector U. Uh, sorry, vectors over here. So let's say that's U and that's V. Okay. So again, ignore what it's saying on the side here for a sec. Just, just their names and their vectors are all we need for the moment. Now, if I go V plus U, look what it does. Okay, it, it finishes the parallelogram, and it connects me from bottom left to top right. So let's rename this. Let's call this vector sum. Okay, so this is what uh, V plus U looks like. Let's finish the parallelogram here. So let's say... Uh, we have a vector that joins um, uh, sorry I just need my points to come back uh, sorry a vector that joins B to another point that's B plus V away okay so that that would be like I'm not that doesn't need a label and let's make it uh, dashed so we're not mixing this up so that would be part of my parallelogram and then I have another vector that joins point C to C plus U. Okay, and that would be over there. And again, we'll just uh, dash and just get rid of its label because we don't really need it. Okay. Now, this parallelogram, as we've already said, if this vector over here is U and this vector is V, then joining the bottom left to the top right is the sum. What about the difference? Watch when I type u minus v. Now it draws it over here because remember vectors do not respect where you started. They are simply a set of instructions, right? It is a certain length in a certain direction. However, if I were to draw the vector that joins... Uh, okay, so sorry, so this is uh, a plus v and that one would be... Uh, sorry, uh, oh, sorry, o plus V and O plus U, right? You see the way, you see what it drew here with, with C and B? Let's just hide the rest for a second. It C and B are the exact same vector, right? It's just, they're not in the same physical space, but they are the same vector. They're both like go left 15 and then go up 10 kind of thing. Okay, let's draw the rest of it one more time and let's hide the subtraction. And you can see that the subtraction that I drew, which was, remember, was u take away v. So let's rename this to uh, u minus v. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so u minus v would be the vector that starts in the bottom right corner and goes up to the uh, top left. Okay, and let's give that a color just so... Uh, Okay, so that would be the subtraction u minus v. Now the other subtraction, which would be v take away u, okay, 
is just going to be the same thing but going from the top left to the bottom right. And again, if I draw a vector from uh, a, I'm sorry, O plus U to O plus V, uh, and then let's just hide that one. Again, you can see they're identical. Uh, this one, let's give it a color of uh, green. And this one, we can rename it to V minus U. So U minus V and V minus U, okay, are are opposite vectors, just like they are with subtracting regular numbers, right? If you take any two numbers, 8 take away 2, you get 6. If you do 2 take away 8, you get negative 6. So you see they're opposites of each other, the same way this works with vectors. So, you know, in your little picture here, you can draw, uh, you know, u minus v would be going from this corner up to that corner, and v minus u would be this corner down to that corner. Okay? Now, another important term here is this term collinear vectors. Collinear simply means parallel. So it's just a vector it's just a vector way of saying parallel. So it means they go in the same direction, and as you know from yesterday, they are two vectors are parallel if you can say this, right? If u equals k right? If u is equal to kv, then they're parallel. That's what we discovered yesterday. Okay, so if they're parallel, it means they're collinear, it means they're scalar multiples of each other. All of that means the same thing. Okay, here it says, given the three vectors a, b, and c, sketch the sums a plus b, a plus b. These two are going to be the same. Uh, oh, sorry, a plus, sorry, I missed the comma. a plus b plus c, and then a plus b plus c. Sorry, the second two are going to be the same. Let's draw this one on GeoGebra, and hopefully you can uh, see how this would work. So let's make a new vector. So let's say A, B, and C. So A looks kind of like that. Uh, B kind of looks like that. And C kind of looks like that. Okay, so let's just rename them and get rid of the points. So this was A, this was B, this was C. Okay, so if I add A plus B together, okay, I would, I, here's A and B, I finish the parallelogram and then connect to the far corner, right? So if I go A plus B, it's going to draw out to that, and you could see, you know, why that would do that. Because that, that would sort of finish the parallelogram up in this corner, right? That's what it would do. Now it says a plus b plus c. So what if we were to add c onto this? So what if I do a plus b plus c? It gives me that. Now how did it do that? Well, it did. It walked over a, then it walked up b, and then it walked up c. Notice if I draw, if I take C and I move it over here, you'll see it's a, it's what is what's just happened is is a perfect uh, is a perfect sort of uh, drawing of this. So this is A plus B plus C. Okay, and uh, again, let's just say um, how do we do this? So a vector that joins um, A plus B to A plus B plus C. Sorry. Oh, I see. Oh, right. I forgot the. It needs to have a point to start. Okay. So this vector up here that I just drew is C. It's the way you would draw it, right? A first, then B, and then C. And where did you start? You started down here. And where did you end? You ended up here. So your answer is simply this line, right there. Okay. Now the second thing it asks is A plus B plus C. But you should know that A plus B plus C is simply going to get you to the exact same place we just got. It's just going there in a different way. This time it's doing B plus C first and then it's adding A again. So let's do it. Let's do it that way. So let's do vector. So it's doing B first, okay? Then it's going to add C. So let's draw a C vector where B ended. Okay? So we want O plus B and we want to connect that to O plus B plus C. So there's the C vector. So it did B first then C, 
and then it's just going to draw an a vector to get over to the same spot. Okay, so uh, o, so vector o plus b plus c to o plus a plus b plus c. Okay, and this little vector it drew at the top. So let's let's just chart the path in a different color so we don't mix this up. So this is just a different way of arriving at the exact same place that we uh, that we arrived at the first time. The answer is the same. It's the blue vector. Excuse me, the blue vector, the green vector. If you did B, then C, then A, it would be the same thing as if you did A, then B, then C, right? Or if you did C first, then A second, and then B third. It doesn't matter. All those orderings would be the same. Many different ways to get there. Okay? That's what this exercise is designed to illustrate. Okay. Label the vectors representing the dotted lines. Okay. 2a. Good question. Can you figure this out? This one is easy. B, I'm yeah, sorry, easier. This one is simply a vec plus b vec. I know, I'm just, this is just vector a plus vector b is the dotted line. Very straightforward. But a and c can be tricky. I know they are uh, subtractions or at least I think they're subtractions, but which one is subtracting which? Again, imagine you started in this bottom corner. Tell me how you would get to that top left corner. What would you do? Well, you would, you would do a negative B, which would get you over here, and then you do a positive A, which would get you up there. So the answer to this first one is A vec. Oh, whoa. Sorry, just skipped to the bottom of the bottom of the unit okay vector a <laughs> uh, I, I kinda think of myself as an expert in Microsoft Word and yet so many very simple things I am completely unable to do okay let's make some space okay Try this again. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little table here. Okay, so the second one we already did, it was A plus B. Okay, that was the middle one. The one on the left, we said, if you started in the bottom right corner, which is where my arrow starts, and finished in the top left corner, right, if you look closely, right, it starts down here and finishes up there, right? How could I get from that start to that ending? I would do a negative B. Plus uh, A. Now again, an easier way to say that is of course A minus B. Again, just imagine there are vector things on there. I <laughs> I'll limit myself to typing them out once per question. Okay, so the first one is a subtraction, and it's A, the A is positive, the B is negative. Now look at this one. I started down here, I want to arrive up there. I do a positive B, that gets me over here, and then I do a negative A, that gets me up here. So what do I say for this one? B minus A. Okay, and that's what the dotted line would represent here. So just, you know, again, whatever you need to do to figure these out, trace them with your finger, draw the full parallelogram, whatever you want, but know the difference between A and C here. Really good question. B, I think you'll be able to get, no problem. Okay, C, a vec uh, three, a rectangular box is shown. Find a single vector equivalent to each of the following. Okay, uh, place the vectors sequentially and add them head to tail. Replace a vector with an equivalent to perform the addition. Okay, so it says, what would a, what would a vector AB plus vector BC be similar to? Now, I actually don't need to look at any picture to do that. I can tell you the answer right off the bat is AC. Why? Because a vector is a set of instructions. This vector tells you how to get from A to B. This vector tells you how to get from B to C. So if you followed all those steps, you would start at A and you would end at C. Okay? Look at it here. A to B, B to C, A to C. 
A to C would be the resultant. Another good vector, a good uh, or, right? Another common vector that you could use here would be EG. EG would also be equivalent because EG would, would be the exact same set of instructions. It would get you across to F and then it would get you up to G, right? So both of them would work. Now AD plus AB is a little bit more difficult, but again, I'm not even going to look at the picture, okay? How do you do this without looking at the picture? So let's say we have AD plus AB, which is what we currently have. Okay, now I want to change this. Let's say uh, uh, sorry, I had an idea and I actually don't think it's going to work. Yeah, never mind. Okay, sorry, let me look at it. <laughs> Let's look at the picture. <laughs> Okay, AD gets me from this corner up to here. AB gets me from this corner up to there, to over to uh, to B. So again, uh, yeah, okay, I, th I think I remember how I'm supposed to do this now. So anyway, AD would be g going, for, okay, right, 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 right. So here's, <laughs> here's what I'm supposed to say. AB, vector AB can be replaced with vector DC. Do you see how? Vector AB takes you from the foreground to the background. Vector DC does the exact same thing. So, for that matter, does HG and EF. Right? Let's just write underneath this. Uh, DC is the same vector as AB, is the same vector as EF, is the same vector as HG. Okay, they are all the same. They all take you from the foreground to the background exactly the same amount of distance, right? Joining the, the different parts of this prism together. So what I did in this question to solve it, I used the property that says if A goes to D and then D goes to C, then the whole vector must be just A to C. To get there, I used a substitution where I replaced AB with another option that was more convenient for me, a DC, because I know that any two no any two letters when they're joined in the middle can be uh, ignored, or I guess it can, be, it can be ignored, can be sort of joined together if you like. Okay, let's look at this question here. It says HD subtract BA. Right away, let's change this question into HD plus AB, right? Why deal with a subtraction? Why not simply reverse the vector and change it into an addition? Now, H, uh, HD cuts from left to right, straight across, and AB goes into the background. So let's say here I want to replace uh, AB with a vector that starts with a D instead, right? Now, AB would be equivalent with the vector DC from this picture because they both, you know, basically you know, go right into the background in exactly the same way. So what I can do here is I can take this question, I can replace the AB with a more convenient, uh, with a more convenient vector, the vector would be DC, and that, if I join those together, it must be the same as going from H to C, right? H to C cuts across diagonally on the same plane, and just think about it, H to D, and then, you know, negative B to A, B to A is coming into the foreground, so negative B to A is going into the background, so my vector is move to the right and go into the background, right, which is HC, which is the vector that we just, you know, that we found using the sort of, quote, algebra of doing this, right? Okay, how about this one? AB plus AD plus AE. AB would get me over here, AD would move me up, AE would move me left. I can kind of visualize that the answer here is going to be AG, but let's make the substitutions and show how it's done. So I would like to replace AD with a vector that starts with a B, so that the two Bs can cancel, right? So AB, instead of adding it to AD, I'm going to add it to BC right because AD is a move that goes from the bottom layer to the top layer 
BC also goes from the bottom layer to the top layer, so it's the same vector. Now AE is a vector that goes uh, right to left, so I need a, a right to left vector that starts at C, so it'll cancel, right? So the right to left vector I'm thinking of is CG. Okay, so this question that you're asked here is much easier if you just make a couple of substitutions and change it into what I've written. AB plus BC plus CG. Where would you end up if you started at A, walk to B, then walk to C, then walk to G? You would end up at G, and you started at A. So you're, the single vector that is equivalent to all of that, all of those steps, is simply the vector AG. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to leave, uh, well, no, that one, oh, sorry, I'm going to leave this one. I, I want you to do this one, okay? So I'm going to post this just on the front page. It doesn't need to be complicated. I'll just post this one on the front page. Uh, and the, I'd like someone to show a solution to this and how they did it, okay? Uh, try it on your own. See if you can do what I've done here and, and apply it to this question. This one here, it says expresses a single vector, but it, but we don't know, you know, any of the, uh, any of the, uh, there's no picture, right? So we get to just have to use the, the properties of the letters here to rearrange. So let's write SV plus AB, oops, oh my, okay, and then let's, uh, let's rearrange the last one. Instead of SJ, we'll make it positive and JS. Okay, so now you can see that the last two the last two vectors there have an internal J. Okay, and we can therefore get rid of that J and get the slightly less inappropriate acronym BS. Okay, then we get uh, on the next section the the Bs are now common to each other, so we get oh, yikes, sorry. So you see now I have two internal Bs, so to get from A to B. And then A to S would be the same as just to get from A to S. And now you see I have SV plus A to S. Well, we learned earlier that the order that you add vectors in doesn't matter. So if I take this one and simply write it in the other way, right? Now I have an internal S, and the answer is simply A to V. So all that, all of this vector here, these these four vectors can all be simplified down to just vector a v, right? Because if you started at point s, then walked to point v, right? Then did the equivalent instruction of a b, and then b j, and then s j subtracted, it would all be the same as if you had just started at a and walked to v, right? And if you're not convinced of that, draw it. So draw draw a bunch of points, put them wherever you want, right? you know, put a bunch of points down, S, A, J, and V, and B, right? And then uh, draw the vectors that would join them, and then follow that path, and show me that you would start at A, and you would end up at V, would be an equivalent vector. Okay, in an orientation race, you walk 100 meters due east, and then you walk north 70 east for 60 meters. How far are you from your original starting position? Okay. To do something like this, right, what you want to do is uh, draw it. So let's draw it. So, so you start, let's say we start at 0, 0. And it says we walk 100, 100 meters to the east. OK, then it says we walk, so let's, it says we walk uh, 60, right? So draw, so yeah, I guess that wasn't such a good idea. Doesn't look like a circle because I stretched the uh, the screen. You gotta go back to one to one. Okay, so then I, I'm not exactly sure where this angle would be, so let's say it's uh, let's say it's there. So I walked from O to A and then from A to B. And again I'm just drawing it. I'm not doing a, a perfect rendition here because the angle I have it says north seventy east so my angle should really be down further like this because North 70 east means you have 70 degrees there. You have 90 degrees here, right? So you, and then you have, uh, what would it be, 20 degrees over here, 
right? That that would be kind of like your picture. I haven't drawn that perfectly here. I've just drawn something just so that we can have a diagram. Okay. So the question is, where are you, or how? What, what does it actually ask? How far are you from your starting position? So you need to find, uh, you know, vector OB. Okay. So to do this, we're going to make use of a property. We're going to use the cosine law. Okay. The cosine law says that if you have a triangle where you know two sides and you know the angle in between them, you can solve the third side, cosine law. Okay. It it says that uh, a squared. Oh boy. Okay a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c is equal to c squared. Okay, and a and b are the two sides that you know, and cos c is the angle that you know in between uh, here. Okay, so the we know the two sides, so one side is 100, one side is uh, 60, and the angle between them would be 90 degrees plus 70 degrees, which would be uh, what we what we know. So A is 100, B is 60, and capital C is uh, 160 degrees, right? So that that's we're just going to use the cosine law to figure out the the remaining distance. So what I'm going to do here is uh, let's actually measure the angle and get GeoGebra to give us the answer. Uh, Let's see. Can we? I don't know if we can do. That. I'm sure there's a way. I just can't think of it right now. So I wanted this to be 160, right? So just zoom in a bit. So that's pretty close, right? It's only 0 0.4 off. So it looks like the answer should be about. 157.71. So let let's let's find out and and we'll test it. Okay. So we have the let's just, just quickly type out the cosine law. Uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So same as the Pythagorean theorem. And then you might you subtract this uh, correction factor for the fact that it's not a 90 degree. So c squared equals 100 squared plus 60 squared. Uh, take away two times 100. Take away 60 times cos of 160 uh, and therefore c squared is equal to, let's just quickly fire that off, so 100 squared plus 60 squared minus 2 times 100 times 60 times cos of 160 degrees gives you 24,876.31 which obviously is way too big so that's your reminder that you need to square root it and we get 157.72. So you are 157.72 meters away from your starting position. Okay, so this type of thing is done a lot in vectors, uh, the cosine law to find a missing magnitude. Okay, so again, another way you could think of this uh, vector A plus vector B is equal to you know, vector r, the resultant. Okay, and in our case, uh, what what we did, we used the cosine law, which actually kind of runs like this, right? So we found that the magnitude of the resultant, oh boy, the magnitude of the resultant squared is equal to, uh, sorry, the. Uh, magnitude of A squared plus the magnitude of B squared, right, minus 2 magnitude A magnitude B and cos uh, theta, where theta is the angle between them. Okay, this is really important. This is how you solve any resultant in any question. If you add two vectors together, the result is the cosine law. Okay? 
So I'm, I'm going to leave it with that for now because we'll talk more about it later. But think about this and try some questions, okay? Okay, last one here is vectors u and v have a magnitude of 3 and 5 and the angle between them is 40 degrees. Find 2u, take away 3v and state the magnitude and direction. Okay, this is a tricky one, uh, but a common one that gets asked. So let's see if we can work it out. So we need two vectors with a magnitude of, of 3 and 5 and the angle between them has to be 40. So let's quickly draw such things. So I'm going to draw a point O. I'm going to draw a point at 3, 0. I'm going to rotate that point uh, 40 degrees, it said. Sorry, I put them in the wrong order. Okay, and then we need a line O. And then we need a circle. Then we need a point here. All right. So, uh, so what? Which one was three? Vector u is three. So u equals vector from O to A. Uh, the other vector was called v. Oh no! 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 O to B. Okay. Now the question we are asked, the question. So here's my two vectors. One of them has a length of five, and one of them has a length of three, and the angle in between them the angle between them is forty. Okay. So this is what we were asked to draw. So again, you don't need to draw it perfectly. You can just draw it. You know, sketch it. Okay, so let's get rid of the grid and the axis. And what we're supposed to draw, what we're now supposed to do, okay, is find 2u take away 3v. So let's draw it, 2u take away 3v. And it comes up with that. Now, how did it do that? Okay, 2u take away 3v. So here's what I'm going to draw. Okay, I'm starting at O, and I'm going to draw two U's. So I'm going to draw a vector, uh, O plus A, and then O plus 2A. Uh, sorry, I can't say A because, uh, sorry, it's vector U, not. Okay, so here's, I've drawn two vector U's, you see? Now, I'm, the next thing I'm going to draw is I'm going to draw three negative v's. Okay, so vector, uh, let's see, so we want uh, o plus 2a as our starting point, o plus 2a take away v is our next point. So you see I drew one negative v, then two negative v's, then three negative v's, and look where it ended up. So the computer isn't pulling this out of thin air. It's drawing two U's going this way, and then it's drawing three V's going this way. Now, what do we know in this situation? Okay, let's just get rid of all the labels so we're not looking at all this confusing uh, stuff on here, okay? And we'll get rid of that, and that should be good. Okay, so this is all we know at this point. This is what your drawing looks like. Okay, we know that this is six, because, uh, you know, uh, it's two U's. We know that this is 15 because it's three sets of five. What would be really nice to know is this angle in the corner. Anybody know what it is? Do you remember your handy Z pattern? The angle between this vector and that vector, I mean, of course, it chose to draw it on that side because I always forget correct order of doing this, but, oh, oh, I see, right, uh, well, what if I do it the other way, 
See, I think it's it's outsmarting me. It's thinking of the yeah, it's thinking of them as starting from the same spot. Okay, um, let's just put a point down, and we can do it even more easily. So let's go uh, O plus two U, and then uh, O plus two U take away three V. Okay, so now let's measure the angle uh, counterclockwise, right? So no, that's not counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is that. Okay, so you see the the angle that your little triangle makes is the 40 degrees is right here, and once again your cosine law is going to work. You have a 6 is a side you know, a 15 is a side you know, and the angle between them is 40. You have to draw this one. Okay, so do, do it on your own, draw it, see if you can make, make sense to yourself why that angle there would be the same as the angle over here. Okay? Now once you've done this, you can just do your cosine law. 6 squared plus 15 squared take away 2 times 6 times 15 times cos of 40. That gives us 123.11. We take the square root of that and we get 11.1. .1. Now when I draw this, uh, the length of, uh, what's the vector? Um, uh, once again, it was 2u take away 3, or 2u take away 3v. The length is 11.1, .1. and not just that; it's you know it's down to the tenth decimal. So our cosine law worked. It told us the correct answer in terms of the magnitude. The magnitude. So let's write the magnitude is 11.09558. Uh, okay. The direction. Now the direction is a bit of a pain because you need to tell me the direction of this. Uh, this uh, vector. Now, the only way you can do this is you give me a direction relative to vector u. So, in other words, we're, we would love to know this angle. Uh, let me just remember my counterclockwise here. If I want to, sorry. No, uh, would be sorry. It would be d o c. So the angle we're looking for is 119.6599 and so on. How do I get that? Where does it come from? Okay, so the direction, so, you know, first of all, let's solve it. So the sine law, right, the sine law says that the, uh, that this the sort of hypotenuse, if you will, uh, not hypo, I guess I shouldn't call it that. The magnitude of the resultant divided by the sine 40, right? So the 11.09558 divided by sine 40 would be equivalent to 6 over sine of angle D. Okay? According to the sine law, right? So whatever angles down here in the corner would be would come from that. Now, if you solve this, you determine that d is equal to. So let's just quickly do this. So, uh, what would d be there? So, it'd be inverse sine. Uh, let's move it around. So, sine d equals six sine forty uh, divided by eleven point oh nine five five eight, and then d would be the inverse sine of all that. So, uh, our inverse sine of six times sine forty divided by h. And we get that the angle in the bottom corner is 20.34. That's where we would, we, of course, GeoGebra, you can just measure it, but solve it on paper, you gotta, you gotta use the sine law. Of course, sine law gives you the answer, right? 20.34. You take your 40 degrees, your 20.34, and you subtract them from 180 to get this last angle. So what I'm going to do to give my answer, I'm going to say the direction is uh, 119, sorry, 119.66 degrees away from vector, uh, so from, so from vector u away from vector v. Okay, so here's vector u, here's vector v. I'm not rotating towards it, I'm rotating away from it. So I rotate 119 degrees away from the other vector. 
Okay, this is a this is a complicated one. It's tricky. Um, you know, just do what you can with this one, and feel free to pose questions and so on. Uh, to twenty point thirty four degrees. Therefore, the angle we need is one eighty minus twenty point thirty four minus forty, and the angle is one nineteen point sixty six degrees from U away from V. Okay, and that's how you kind of give the answer. This one, I, I, as long as you can give me something, I can understand a picture, for example. Uh, I'll work with you, okay? I, I, if you don't, don't really see why I'm saying from U away from V and all this stuff, just if you can draw a clear diagram that has, you know, you know this angle solved, uh, and you would just say something like the answer is 119.66 degrees away from this vector. I, I would understand you. Okay, I'm not gonna. I'm, this is not. You don't have to know exactly how to write that out. You just need to be able to express it to me in some way that makes sense. So uh, let's stop there for today. Try some of these ones again, please. You, you need a pencil. You need to be drawing with these things. And if you want to take any pictures of your work and post questions, please go ahead.